Hi Jaywalkers, how are you doing this Sunday? I'm going to talk to you guys about something that is going on in our world today. Something that's a serious issue and a lot of people are talking about right now. I'm titling this message, All Lives Matter. I know that's in itself maybe even a little bit controversial in the midst of hearing all the time about this movement called Black Lives Matter. Yeah, but the truth is that black lives do matter. So do white lives, so do Hispanic lives, so do Arabic lives. All lives matter to God. And so I'm gonna touch on this, and some of you are gonna disagree with some of the things I say. Some of you are gonna wish I hadn't said some of the things I say. Some of you might like some of the things I say, but the point is that what I say doesn't really matter. What matters is what God says. And we're going to be looking at the Bible and allowing it to speak for itself. But we do come to the table with certain experiences and certain feelings. And sometimes those things can help us understand things better. So I am going to share a little bit of myself and my own experiences. You know, sometimes um, people ask me what I am. And when they ask me what I am, I know what they mean. <laughs> they mean, what's your nationality? But what I'll say to them is, I'm a human being. That's honestly my answer almost every single time someone asks me what are you and the reason why I say that is because that is honestly how I define myself I'm a human being I'm not defined by the color of my skin I'm not defined by my background uh, I'm not defined by the things that people try to put up to divide us and separate us into categories if you looked um, at kind of the people that ask me that question sometimes they're Hispanic people and they'll ask me if they think I speak Spanish. I can hold my own in Spanish, but they learn quickly that I'm actually not uh, of, of Hispanic origin. They'll ask me, uh, or they'll think sometimes that um, I'm from the Middle East somewhere uh, because my skin tone looks Middle Eastern. I've got a, I've got a pretty big beard. Uh, I'm, I'm a tall guy. I just confuse people. My nationality is that my dad looks black and my mom looks white. They've actually got some other things in there too. I've got a little Native American in me. I've got a little Asian in me. Uh, but those things, like I said, are part of who I am. They're not what makes me me. My heart and my character are what makes me me. And that's the way that God sees us is by our heart and our character. I was mixed when being mixed wasn't cool yet. My mom and dad dated in the 70s, got married in the 70s, and there was still kind of a stigma on them. And I honestly grew up with that stigma. Going to school, I didn't really fit in with the black kids. They didn't entirely accept me, I was too white for them. I didn't really fit in with the white kids. They didn't accept me, I was too black for them. And in, in a weird way, even though I didn't fit in with anybody, I kind of was able to fit in a little bit with everybody. And what I learned from that is that people are people. And we put so many things on people. We try to label them. We try to classify them. We try to put them into boxes. And the only box that God puts on people is what's in your heart? You know, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. talked about it. He said, I dream of a day when people will be judged and looked at and seen, not for the color of their skin, but for the content of their character. And I can honestly say that that's how I try to look at people. And I have sort of, I think, an advantage in that area because I'm looking at myself in a lot of different people. In the same way, I understand where people are coming from. Like right now, man, people are upset. They're upset about tension between races. They're upset about mistreatment. They're upset about things that are being done that are the wrong thing. They're upset about George Floyd, a man who died for no good reason. And man, I can feel the pain in these people and it brings up history and it brings up things that you know have not gone away that should be gone. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to relate this to something real quick and something I thought of today. Um, I played football when I was in college and 
there's a lot of competition in football. You know, you're competing against players that are on the defense. If you play on the offense, I was a wide receiver. So I'm going against these cornerbacks every day. They're trying to beat me up. They're trying to get better. But I'm also going against people on offense that are fighting for the same position that I'm fighting for, trying to get on the playing field on game day. But one of the things that we always had to remember was that no matter how much we're going against each other and no matter how much we're, we're competing against each other and no matter how much things seem like we're kind of against each other, we were always on the same team. We were part of the same team. And that team was the, the college that I played for, Kent State University. And we played together and it was not about the differences between us. Those differences made us stronger. That competition made us better. But at the end of the day, we all were competing for the same thing. And I think sometimes we forget that we're all on the same team. We're all human beings. All lives matter. Not black lives only, not white lives only, not any of those things that we separate us by. Lives matter. Souls matter. Eternity matters. And man, my, my, my teammates were my teammates. And I think that sometimes we forget that there is an enemy. But the enemy is not black people. It's not white people. It's not even people who are doing the wrong things. It's not police officers. It's not people that are rioting. All of these things can be difficult at times and they're difficult right now but the real enemy is the thing that's underlying all these things it goes back years and years and years and years you can track it back to the united states in the 1960s when they're fighting for civil rights and you'll see this this enemy there you could track it back further than that you can track it to slavery You'll see this enemy there. You can go back. Slavery didn't start when, when people were brought over from Africa into the United States. Slavery existed before that. In fact, you can track slavery back to BC times. The Israelites were in slavery in Egypt. Slavery's been around for a long time, but guess what? Slavery's not even the enemy. The enemy is this thing that tracks back to the first two people that ever lived. The enemy is sin. The enemy is sin. That's what we're fighting against. We're fighting against a world that's broken because of our own decisions, because of the things that we've brought into this world. We're not perfect. We know that the things that have been done are wrong. We've done wrong things. I've done wrong things. The people that I've wronged aren't the enemy. The people that have wronged me aren't the enemy. The enemy is sin. The enemy is darkness and evil. And it rears its head in some of these times. But I'm telling you, one of the things that I love the most about the Bible is that it doesn't shy away from those things. The Bible speaks into darkness. It speaks into despair. It speaks into hate. And it calls us to something greater. As Christians, we don't have a right to judge the world that's non-believing. The Bible tells us not to judge the world. The Bible tells us not to worry about the opinions and the ideas of man. I was listening to something that happened yesterday. It was the SpaceX launch. We were watching it. Man, should have been an amazing event, an amazing thing. And it was an amazing thing. But I'm sitting there watching this live broadcast of it. And there are comments going along the bottom. We're about to send people into space for the first time in a long time. You think people would be excited about that? And... Some were very excited about it, but others were using it as opportunities to get their little message out. Sometimes that message was not a good message. People were writing, Black Lives Matter. Other people were writing, Black Lives Don't Matter. There were people who were writing, I hope it explodes. I hope it crashes. There were people writing those things when there are two men that are about to go into space. And that just broke my heart to the point that we had to slide the chat away so I couldn't even read it anymore because I didn't even want to read the ridiculousness of the things that people were saying. Now, why do I share that? Because I'm not mad at those people. You know, they might just be 
upset. They might just be angry. They might just be confused. They might just be looking for a rise from people. You don't know what people's motives are. And we're not called to judge them. That's God's position. But what was upsetting to me was that, man, there's this kind of thing in the world. There's this sin. There's this thing inside of us that wants to get a rise out of people, that wants to be mean, that wants to hurt people's feelings, that wants to push our own agenda. And man, I don't, I don't know about you, but sometimes that can get frustrating. You know, we have uh, people looting right now. And I know that there are some people who are doing that because they're upset. But I'll bet there are also some people who are doing that because they can right now. Sort of a mob mentality. Sort of like when a fight breaks out in a middle school cafeteria. And, and people that wouldn't otherwise get involved start throwing stuff and start getting their own hands in there and start pushing people. Becomes this like mob mentality. Not because people are bad. They are. But they're bad not because of just wanting to be. They're bad because of bad decisions, because of a sin nature that exists within us. Evil is in the world because of sin. Sin is the real enemy. We're all on the same team. And our goal is to fight together. So all that's my opinion. All that stuff that I'm just saying. But what does the Bible have to say about this? Because the Bible is true. Scratch everything I just said if it doesn't make sense. Even if it does, this is truth. So I'm going to read three things from you and I'm going to let the Bible speak for itself on this issue. Because what the Bible says is what we should be listening to. Not what people say. Not what we want to hear. Not even how we feel. That's tough. But not even how we feel. I'm going to start in Galatians chapter 3 uh, in verse 26. Here's what it says. For in Christ you were all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. This is what I think the Bible is saying there. It's saying we try to look at each other and say Jew, Gentile, male, female, slave, free. God looks at people and he says, in Christ, not yet. Because <laughs> I know his, his heart is for everyone to be in Christ. But man, we're fighting about the wrong things sometimes. That's eternity. I know these things matter. I'm not saying they don't matter. I'm saying what matters to God is are they in Christ or are they not? If they're in Christ, man, they're a new creation. If they're in Christ, then their eternity is sealed. If they're in Christ, then all things are new. And, and His Spirit's going to start to be what flows out of us and bring that love that we don't necessarily have inside of ourselves. But it starts with Him. And I just love that. Because God doesn't look at us and see black, white, slave, free, Jew, Gentile. He looks at us and He says, Are they in Christ or are they not in Christ yet? And I'm going to jump to Romans. And I'm going to start with uh, verse 9 and go through verses nine, 19. Uh, just listen. It's a tough one. A tough teaching. Go back and read it. Romans 12 verses 9 through 19. The little section is titled, Marks of a True Christian. Let love be genuine. You can go look up the definition of love and it'll blow your mind. Real love, that agape love, is unconditional. It's not based on what people do to you. It's based on a choice. You choose to love people or not. And we love because he first loved us. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. The Bible says hate what's evil. Evil is the enemy. Hate what's evil. Abhor it. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be, be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Patient in tribulation. When there's trials, tribulations, be patient. Be constant in prayer. God, I pray that you would help us to know what it means to pray more. 
to be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Here we go. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. It's a hard teaching, but it's the teaching of Christ. He never strayed from that teaching. That wasn't a sometimes thing for Jesus. That was an all the time thing. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Part of right now is about weeping with those who weep. There are a lot of people who are hurting right now. We can weep with them. We need to understand where they're coming from. At least try to. I know we don't always understand. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Everybody's got an opinion right now, don't they? About what should be happening, what shouldn't be happening. I get sick of people's opinions. I just want to know what God says. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves. Never avenge yourselves. Someone does something wrong, man, that's the first thing I want to do is avenge it. Man, somebody does something to my family or somebody I care about. I want to get them back. But the Bible says don't. How could it say that? It says, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. You know, God's got it. We try to take it from him and, and insert our own justice. It's not our job. God did not tell us to judge the universe. He's the judge. And he's the one who enacts vengeance. And who shows mercy sometimes. And man, sometimes we don't want that. But I pray that we would be better at this. Not avenging ourselves and leaving it to the wrath of God. I need to be better at that. To the contrary, if your enemy's hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Man, those verses, I, I ended up going to verse 21 just to close out the section. Those verses speak to God's heart on how we should handle being treated wrong. They speak to God's heart on what it means to be a true Christian. It's one thing to say you're a Christian. It's another one when someone persecutes you, when someone does you wrong, when someone shows the evil that exists because of sin in the world. Now what are my Christians going to do, says God? Can they react in love? Can they live peaceably with others? Can they leave the vengeance to me? That's what marks a true Christian. And I want to show you one more thing. Because, uh, because this place is not our home. So important to remember that sometimes. We forget quickly. That God's coming back. Jesus will come back. It might be sooner than later. A lot of people who are looking at the signs of the times are saying, Man, I wouldn't be surprised if Jesus came back any day now. And there's some things that have to happen still, but we might be getting close to this. Revelation 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from heaven, out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold! The dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, For the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. <sighs> That's where we're headed. You know what you don't hear in there? You don't hear any talk of black, white, 
slave free from one country from another country good job bad job what you hear is that God's coming for his people for everybody who's on the same team and you know what God's people you've got two things to be concerned about number one are you living like Christ said if you're in him then are you showing his love because that's a mark of a true Christian and number two about those people who aren't there yet. How are they going to know what his love can do if we don't show them? It's easy to get mad. It's easy to get upset. It's easy to stay out of it completely and ignore the whole situation. You know what's hard to do? It's hard to step in in love. It's hard to step in and say, you know what? I got these feelings inside of me and I want to be mad and I want to just join in or I want to just fight against it or whatever your feelings are telling you or whatever the opinions of man are, are screaming in your ear. But to be a follower of Jesus means that you handle things a little bit differently. It means that you don't see people for the color of their skin but for the content of their character. And I know that that's wishful thinking in today's world, but I think it's what God calls us to. And I think it's possible. I think it's not only possible, I think it's our, our, our mission as a believer to love one another, to see one another the way that God sees us. Don't forget who the real enemy is. The real enemy is sin. You've, you've let it kind of take over in your life. You can come to God and ask him to take it back. If you've got a prejudice inside of you, if you've got something inside of you that, that you know doesn't line up with what the word of God says, then you can ask God to give you his love for others. And I pray for police officers right now. Not all of them are bad. You know, they're probably doing their best. Some of them have let evil into their hearts and that's no different than you and me. Now, I'm not giving anybody an excuse for any actions. I'm just telling you, they're not the enemy. Evil is, sin is people that are rioting. I wish they weren't. I don't like it as much as the next person. But if you're mad at them, if you're hating them, if you find yourself welling up inside over that, pray for them. That's what the Bible says to do. It says, lift them up to God. These things are hard things. Hard things that the Bible does not shy away from. And I'm going to ask you personally to take that place in your heart right now, one of lifting people up to God. Let's do it together. Maybe this rings true in your heart. Say, God, there are some things that are wrong in my heart right now. I don't think of myself as a prejudiced person. I don't think of myself as somebody who chooses evil. But God, when I look at my life, I haven't always chosen you either. And I'm sorry for that. God, I want you to come into my heart and give me your love today. Give me your peace today. Help me to see the world the way that you see it. You gave us differences to be beautiful, to make us diverse, not to fight, not to squabble, not to hate. God, take those things out of me and replace them with your love. Replace them with your spirit. I believe that's why Jesus came to this earth. He came to die for the people who would spit on him, call him names, make fun of him, and hang him on a cross. And he came for you and for me. 
And God, I thank you. I give him my life. I make him the Lord of my life today. God, I don't pretend to have this all figured out. And, and something in me is still off. But I need you to work in my heart. I need your spirit to change my soul. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Guys, I might have said something wrong today. I don't pretend to have all the answers. I don't have all the answers. I, I don't even know if I have any, but I know that this book does. So don't listen to me. Seek it for yourself, what God says, and realize that he's the one that can change things. Not us. It's not a leader. It's not a person. It's not a political stance. God's the only one who can change this. God, come in and do your work. We need you. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys have a great week. I'll see you soon.